Hey, mayday to you guys out there. You see me with the truck, but guess what? No boat attached. I'm down here getting some supplies from my sister because I need them. She's got a little too many and I need them for my butternut squash soup, a fall treat that we're gonna be making you. So I'm just gonna pop in here and get some carrots and celery. And uh, then you're gonna get to see a delicious soup made. So simple, so easy, but so delicious. So stick around. I am back and I am in the kitchen. Back from my sister's house, was able to get some nice celery, some nice uh, carrots, and one real nice apple, which will go in there. If you look over at the stove, I'm going to be uh, definitely roasting these. I'll roast the vegetables. Now I wanna show you the star of the show. It's this guy. Welcome, butternut squash. Butternut, why are you so prominent in the fall time? Well, we're gonna see. We're gonna see why you're so prominent because we're gonna make some delicious butternut soup, squash soup. Let's do it. In the roasting pan, guys, I've got some uh, celery and carrots. I'm gonna add the uh, squash to that. I've got a hot uh, thing of broth back here that'll get added, about four and a half cups. That'll get added to it. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut up the butternut squash. I'm gonna show you how easy this should be. All right, let's take it from here. What you want to do first, get a sharp knife. Get a nice uh, chef's knife, whatever. Cut the end off. Get that out of there. Cut this end off. You may have to pierce down through it. And cut that end off. Then, one of the easiest ways you can do this is cut it in two. Cut it in two and then peel it. Obviously you want to peel it. Cut these peels off of it. But you want to scoop out and see this has uh, some fun stuff in it, and what they call the guts. You want seeds, you want to get in there and scoop those out. So we'll scoop those out. Once we get that uh, all peeled and everything, the only thing left to do is you get it like this. Then you just slice it into cubes or slice it into chunks, whatever you want. You don't want it being too big, you know. It's going to get roasted and uh, when it roasts, it'll soften up. Now, if you're doing this without roasting it and just sticking it in a pan and uh, cooking it down, then you're gonna want these really in small chunks. But now, I'm just gonna rough cut them and throw them in the, uh, throw them in the uh, thing. You can retain some of the seeds if you want and uh, roast some of those, you know? They're gonna be delicious. You might even give it a uh, nutty flavor, but if you do add the seeds, you're probably going to want to strain it after it's done cooking and everything. After you get the final product, blend it up or whatever, you're going to probably want to strain it because if you don't, you're going to have like bits and you're not going to want that. That's horrible. All right, so now that we got this all chopped and ready to go, all we got to do is added over here. And I added an onion, I forgot to tell you, you, you definitely want an onion in there. You know, well, let's get this put in here. I've got my oven preheated to 425, or four, I'm sorry, 460. Can you see it right there? 460. And uh, you can go 450, you can go, you know, 460. I would stay around 450 if you're gonna roast. Roasted vegetables just come out with such an incredible taste. So we're gonna go ahead and olive oil these bad boys up, give it a douse of olive oil. 
and uh, a dash of salt. And then after that, all we gotta do is do the boogaloo. Just do a few mixes like this. Get that olive oil all in there. Onion, celery, carrot, and butternut squash. Got a few seeds in there. I don't know if that's a good idea. I think I'm gonna abandon that. You know? Why? Why test fate? You know? Why tempt fate? Anyway, once that's done, let me wash my hands real quick. Throw it in the oven. Throw it in the oven to bake for probably, I don't know, two hours maybe. That's mighty hot. Don't stick your tongue on that. All right. We'll be back after those are nice and baked. I should have said nice and roasted, but you get the picture, right? Mayday. Guys, I also got a fresh Granny Smith apple, which is what you want to use, or any apple that's sweet. And you can put this in instead of any sugar or anything to balance it out. What I'll do is after this roast for about an hour, I'll chop this up and cube it, throw it in for about an hour with it, and then they'll all be ready to go. And then they're getting pureed, baby. We're going to have some good times. Well, it's close enough to one hour. I cut up uh, that Granny Smith apple. And any people out there named Smith, these are delicious. Tell your granny that... They're kicker, you know, they're kick butt, they're good. All right, so let's add these in right now. And uh, st we're gonna give the pot a little stir too, just to mix up those uh, veggies. Oh, nice and roasted, yes, baby. Let's dump these apples on. These are gonna go for probably another hour, guys. So about two hours roasting. See the onions kind of getting a little burn up, which is, eh, I mean, it's not the end of the world. It's going to give it flavor because it's going to caramelize. So, stick that in there. I'll turn the oven down to about 4, 425 now. And we'll be back taking them out and making the soup. This pot brewing on the stove is about four and a half cups of water. And what I did, I put uh, three bouillon cubes in it and it was really salty. So that was a mistake. So you want to go four cups of water and probably just one bouillon cube. The bouillon cube can be chicken. It can be vegetable. Depends on what you want. Okay. This just happens to be tomato, uh, tomato chicken and, uh, We'll see how that goes. I think that's going to add a really good flavor. Now, the reason you want to be careful with those bouillon cubes because you'll get a lot of salt. Four cups, you might even take, if you've got a bouillon cube this size, one of these bigger ones instead of the smaller ones, you might even want to break it in half. It's up to you. Just test it, taste it. It's, it uh, because if it's really salty, you're going to have to add more water and let it, let it, let it boil down. And, uh, you know, maybe instead of adding all of that, you put some two cups of water in here and only two cups of what you got if it's too salty. And, uh, cause you're adding salt. We've salted the, uh, uh, we salted the vegetables before we uh, roasted them. And it calls for a little bit of salt at the end, but I think I'll probably skip that. We'll just see, we'll have to try it. All right, guys, I'm at about the hour and 35 minute mark, and I'm right at about the time where I feel like I can pull these. I think they've given up the ghost. Um, they're nice and toasted and uh, roasted. So let's take a quick peek, pull these out. Nice and roasted. Set those over there. Turn the stove off. Now, What's nice is that we just got to take the, uh, take the roasted stuff and add it to the, uh, to the, um, 
stock pot. Once we do that, we'll be able to uh, add some broth or stock or whatever you want to call it. Pardon me on this. I have to do this left-handed and it's in your way. But once we get that all put in, now got a whole stock pot right there full of that. And I want to take some of this, which is that broth that we had, add some of that. I'm not going to add all of it. I'm just going to add some of it. Now what the heck. Let's add it all. Sounds good to me. What am I going to do with it? Right? So now we have our stock pot nice and full of good stuff. So the next step is we want to take an immersion blender. Well, we want to add, I've got a uh, half a teaspoon of nutmeg, um, a pinch of salt, and some ground black pepper. I'm going to add that in there. And uh, we're going to give this a whirl with some emulsion technique. <laughs> You can do this in a blender, but the thing is, if you do it in a blender, it's going to uh, probably you have to take stages, uh, do it in steps. And the reason you have to do it in steps is because there's a good chance that blender will uh, make the lid explode. Now, Vitamix might be a little different. careful with these things man they got a mind of their own you pull them out of there you could be splattered and burnt because that is hot but you want to take basically a slotted spoon well a slotted spoon like this kind of tilt it and just see see if you got all the chunks and everything ground up and if not you might want to go back to uh doing a little more emulsion blending see that oh man that's good wow is that good wow really good let's do a couple more of strokes with this thing and That's about it. That is about it. The stringy bits are pretty much, I don't know, they're pretty much pureed. Now what a good thing, what you have to do with this guys, as soon as you're done with that, you want to take some heavy whipping cream. Heavy whipping cream. And you can whip it. Whip it good. Just give it a shake. And then we're going to uh, just stir that in, about a cup of it. And the last time I tried opening one of these, it gave me problems. But not this time. Oh, yep, it did. Uh, these things are a nightmare. Anyway, I'm going to go about, I am going to measure. Because I, I want to make sure that I've got about a cup in here. I don't want to cheat it. So we're going to go and just basically stir that in. Give it a little stir. And that right there, my friends, is looking great. Woo, dope. That's going to be really good. Let's dish some up and try it. And here we go with the moment of truth. Take a ladle full of this. And let it rock out. It's a 
nice, nice healthy, uh, healthy, um, oh, what did I do with the, uh, uh, come on, there it is, got a little parsley here, take a couple sprinkles of parsley, right on top for a little color, and that, my friends, is butternut squash soup. It's nice and hot. Let's give it a try. And this is going to be good. I've already tasted it. Oh, man. The roasted flavors. Oh, man. That has just got such a good taste. Hey, you know what? Soup is good food. And uh, you know what's even good with it? Grilled cheese sandwich. But I think I'll just eat it alone for right now. If you want to strain it, you're going to be able to strain it and get a lot of uh, maybe some stringy stuff out of it. Or if you blend it a lot better than I did. Me, I kind of like that in there, but that's just my preference. You can strain yours or blend it even more, but uh, try this recipe. It's so simple, so easy. Like I said, if you don't want to roast it, all you have to do is chop up your vegetables, put about three tablespoons of butter in a pan like that, like uh, the one I showed you, the bigger one. Saute your onions around in there, get them loose and sweated. And then just add your carrots and add your uh, or chop. You want to dice them real, real fine. Get your carrots and your celery and your uh, smaller cubes of butternut and put them in there and then add your four cups of uh, whatever stock you wish. I wouldn't try beef stock, but I would go vegetable or chicken. And uh, add your nutmeg, add a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, stir it around. Um, you know, emulsify it, blend it, whatever you want to do. And then just, uh, I don't know, add your cream, add a cup of cream to it. You're all set. Take it out. I wish I had some oyster crackers. I think oyster crackers would be good with this, but that's just me. Anyway, guys, I love having you. I thank you so much for uh, tuning in and sharing my videos is awesome. Hit the like button if you would. It helps it get out to more people. And uh, to make this channel grow, subscribe because there's plenty of room for you on my day or my channel. So, till next time, Mayday is out of here.